These wheels that are really not my cup of tea. I like them in the pictures, not in person. They're made out of these plastic materials. It's supposed to resemble a UK plug socket. So I guess I get that. But the name is the weird part and it's sort of a fail on marketing. Probably they didn't realize this, but the official term for these wheels, as stated on the window sticker of this car, is the Corona wheel option. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Out of Spec Motoring. This is sort of a coronavirus road trip. We're gonna be extremely careful. Obviously you can tell the barber shop is closed, but I have just driven up here to Maryland. I forget the name of the town, but somewhere around Aberdeen to this Electrify America charging station because we are meeting my friend and colleague, Tom Malagny. Tom is a writer at Inside EVs, and uh, that's also where I do some work for them. I run their video uh, channels for them. And if you didn't know that, so go check them out at Inside EVs YouTube channel. We just started a new one for the US-based stuff. But Tom has the new Mini Cooper SE, the electric Mini. It is the cheapest new EV on the market in the US, and it also has the lowest range. Now, those are two not great things. I mean, cheap is good, but the Mini is a really premium car. So Tom said, because he has a press car, this is crazy, this wind, um, he's gonna bring it down to the track so we can play around with it. Now, it's just gonna be me and Tom. We're gonna try and keep our distance. I really haven't seen anyone around, which is nice. Um, but we're gonna bring it down. So I said, all right, I'll wake up early this morning, come meet you up in Maryland so that I can film your road trip down in the electric mini because everyone loves a good out of spec motoring road trip. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go roughly 300 and a bit miles from here in Maryland down to the track, the out of spec motoring track in North Carolina. And it, the car only does, I think, 110 miles EPA range. It does 50 kilowatt fast charging. He's already driven it down here from New Jersey. I think he only had to do one charging stop. He did like a zero to 100% charge and is doing sort of a highway range test. So we'll catch up with Tom in a little bit. I'm gonna throw this on the Chatamo, fully charge this car so I can just Chatamo it at the EA stations along. So I don't need to divert and go supercharge. I'll just charge it up here at the EA stations, which should be fine because it'll do the same charging speed as the Mini. So let's go on a road trip. Tom, what state of charge are you at right now? Uh, we arrived at 14% state of charge. I burned a little bit more electrons on this leg than the first leg. Just coincidentally, both of the legs were 86 miles. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, and I arrived at the first station with like 50 miles of range. No way. Estimated. I don't know if it went that far. Wow. But on the second one, I arrived at with 14 miles of range because now that I got a little comfortable with the car, I knew I, I, knew stretch I could it push bit. it a little more. So I was going like 75, 80 most of the okay. way. And on the first first 86 miles, I did like 65, 70. Okay. I, I just, you know, I didn't want to start off this 450 mile <laughs> trip and not make the first <laughs> charging station. <laughs> It looks like Tom brought his own food so he doesn't have to go in to get food anywhere. I should have thought about that. But wow, look at the interior on this thing. It's got a really cool stripe here. It's the beautiful uh, white seats there. A satellite gray, I believe, is the official mini term. You have uh, driver assistance on this car. Adaptive cruise, it does not have, it looks like. Uh, but it has just normal cruise, of course. But everything else, wow. So we're now in the Mini while it's fast charging. We're at 26% with 24 miles projected. This new digital display is really cool. Now I am familiar with Minis. Like I said, I used to work for them and I love these things. So we don't need any copyright right now. Uh, does it tell you charging power? At first glance, it does not. So you have your output here and your charge when you're driving and your battery state of charge here on the right. I'm going to scroll through the little menus here. 
nothing seems to be adjustable. You just do that by clicking the BC button here. These are your auto high beam adjustments. Let's go into the cars system here to see if it can tell us anything about electric driving technology in action, e-drive. Nope. So it just says that it's charging. So I guess it doesn't tell you the chat fast charging speeds, but you can see the heads up display with the pop-up. And yeah, I'd say so far so good in here. So as I'm sitting here smiling away in the Mini because finally I can get an F56 chassis Mini with an electric drivetrain, uh, Tom's initial impressions were that the car feels limited in terms of power. So when you floor it, he says it ramps up slowly and it doesn't seem to give you everything that he thinks it can. Uh, we'll be drag racing this car against a BMW i3 on the Inside EVs channel, so make sure you go check that out. But as I'm sitting here, I'm noticing a interesting thing where it's really same technology as i3 in this car so as we're charging if you want to run the heat or ac other than the fan you need to go into the system here and click a button called activate comfort climate control and what that does is it allows the ac compressor or the heater to kick on and keep the climate at a reasonable temperature if you don't do that it's just going to be feeding in ambient air i mean that's just a silly thing it should just know it's an electric car you're plugged in just keep the cabin at the right temperature i mean these it's just old school stuff but that is okay this is really again for the value I, it's so much car so this is the mini infotainment display you control it with this knob setting here this is the new shifter for all new minis so let's go into here you have all these different menus such as like navigation you can choose all your music and this is all the connected applications so you can look at it from your phone it does have an app you can precondition it um, you have tons of settings nice thing about bmw group products is you can adjust pretty much everything but uh, another thing that's interesting is the iDrive control, what BMW calls it, always turns things the opposite direction of the mini connected display. So it's the same unit, it just has the mini software on there. You can program this to show the Rolls Royce or the BMW software, but this spins differently. So somewhere at BMW Group, they decided that mini owners' brains are wired backwards to normal BMW Rolls Royce owners. And they're onto something. They're definitely right about that. There is a thing about mini owners. They're hilarious people. They're great. And there's a huge cult following. And I really hope that a lot of the true mini enthusiasts like myself get into this car. We can see the screen here. Let's take a look at our charging power. This is the only way. So it's 43 kilowatt at 39%. So it's not pulling the full 50 kilowatt like we had expected. We'll keep an eye on this to see if it does this at other chargers. The peak I've seen so far is 41 kilowatt. Uh, charging cost is relatively inexpensive for this uh, car because again, it's 18 cents a minute here. It's 15 cents a minute in North Carolina with the Pass Plus membership. And uh, it doesn't, it, you're basically pulling towards the top of the pricing tier. So cost is not an issue on this car at all for charging, I would say. We've just planned the next stop. Tom basically went and uh, Electrify America helped point out all the stations that we'll be using. We're gonna try and stick to their network because they have a lot of stations available and it's been very reliable as of recently. Uh, so the station we're going to try to go to is in Alexandria, Virginia. It's 71 miles away. We're going to charge the Mini up to about 90% to get there. This thing's upside down, but you get the idea of where we're going. The little range bar says it thinks we can make it. Uh, we have a backup plan, if not, with a charger a little bit farther north than that. So we should be good. Just pulled in to, I don't actually know, I guess we're in Alexandria, Virginia. I've never been to this uh, charging station before, but I think we're gonna call Tom Leadfoot Tom. Uh, <laughs> I thought he'd be cruising along in the mini at like 60, 70, but we're doing like 80, blowing by everyone. Like he was working that thing pretty hard 
And we went like 70 something miles, so that's pretty good. You can drive it. I have no, what uh, percentage state of charge are you at? Oh, I'm at high. I'm at like 35. 35%. So like, you weren't going slow at all. I was just saying, you were really hammering it past people and driving yeah. it normally like a typical New Jersey driver here. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's how I always test, whenever I test drive the cars, I always drive it like I normally would, and it's a little hard. <laughs> yeah, it's great. But I mean, that's the cool thing. The mini zippy, it looks fast from the outside, like when you go for a pass. Um, what was your efficiency? Do you know your miles yeah, per kilowatt? Yeah, I wanted to ask you. I hope you reset yours. I, I have mine logged here. 4.1. So 4.1. So that's miles 250 watt hour per mile, plus or minus. Yeah. So bit. that's better than this car did, I think. Let's take a look. And I wouldn't have thought that. Let's look. So this is a long range uh, dual motor performance. This did 252, so it was identical. It's like the exact However, same. one yeah. thing, that car was pushing the air out of the way because I was following you. Yeah. For, and not you super closely. A little, you were uh, well, I just had autopilot on one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's interesting. They're pretty much identical. And the Model 3 is super efficient. And for this brick to be that efficient, that's pretty good. This is road tripping Corona style. You want to make sure you touch everything with the rag that you're going to touch. And we may as well just wipe that off too. And I'll wipe the adapter down. I have not gone into any stores. I haven't really been near anyone. I'm keeping my distance from Tom. So we're trying to be as safe as possible. So we just planned out our next route, which is 88 miles from here to the next Electrify America. There's a few in between, but I think this will let us get to about an 80% charge. Maybe we do a 90, 95% charge, real deep charge on this car. And we should be able to get that 88 miles, no problem. Uh, and if for whatever reason we can't on the Mini, there's plenty of stations up here. The reason I'm showing you the screen on the Tesla is it's just a little bit easier to show you the maps than in that car. So we just charged up the Mini. Wow, I really, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, sorry, I keep going on about it, but it's really bugging me. Um, we charged up the Mini to 95%. Why? Well, we were kind of just talking and just wanted to take a break. There was really no reason. So um, that was the perfect stop. We have 88 miles. I have no question we'll be able to make it easily in the uh, Cooper SE. I, I charged up to 83%. For some reason, my Chatamo is charging only at 22 kilowatt. It normally would do 50. So that was a weird thing, but I didn't try to restart it or anything like that. So uh, let's hit the road. We have an hour and a half to the next charging stop. And honestly, we probably could even stretch it to the next, but uh, this is great. Super easy. Uh, initial impressions sort of after two stops now is it's the limited range on the Cooper SE, one, it gets a lot more range than I expected on the highway, like way more. And two, uh, road tripping, it's no problem because it charges at 50 kilowatt, which doesn't sound like much, but on that little tiny battery, uh, you're not really stopped for more than 20, 25 minutes. Uh, you could probably even get the times down to 15 minutes if you pull in with a lower state of charge and ride it to 80%. So I haven't seen the car down to single digit state of charge yet. I wonder if it still does 50 kilowatt. I imagine it does. Um, if so, that's quite a bit of charge right there. I've, I'm, uh, I'm really coming around to this. I think at first I thought this car would just be a city slicker, like it would never leave city streets. But honestly, in California and around here on the East Coast, where we have a lot of charging infrastructure and you don't take trips very often, it seems to be a really good option. at our next charging stop, potentially our last here in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we did keep the speeds a little bit lower. There was denser traffic. So I imagine the Mini did better than 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour on this stretch. We'll take a look. Uh, my car was pretty much right on par, 255-ish watt hour per mile. So maybe the Mini is as well. 
it just looks really good going down the road and uh the pickup is pretty insane so i mean all electric cars are quick of course but the mini still packs a punch at least looking outside in so efficiency on this leg same 4.1 yeah my car was identical 254 55 yeah, yeah, yeah. we were at 4.2 for most of the time yeah but that last leg then you, you floored know, it i kicked it up a notch a little bit <laughs> yeah and uh you know these things happen and uh, the efficiency drops well but... you're in the south now so welcome <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, anyway sounds good let's get it charging up what uh, state of charge are you at uh 21 oh nice nice and low well, we just unplugged the Mini at 96%. 96 we were here for 36 minutes. Uh, again, overcharged a little bit because we want to have some juice when we get it down to the track. So this isn't cannonball out of spec style road tripping here. This is normal hanging out, lackadaisical road trips, which are great. The Mini is doing really well. It looks great going down the road. Charging is relatively quick. And the stops are an hour and a half, two hours apart, which is what we do in supercharging anyway, because I typically only charge to 50% when I'm road tripping my car. So this isn't really that different. Of course, we're covering less ground, but hey, it's pretty great. And um, yeah, no overheating issues. The fans haven't kicked on for charging once. Uh, the charging curve has been identical for each charging stop uh, that I've been a part of it. It did charge a couple kilowatt faster for the first stop that Tom did. We're not quite sure why, but um, either way, it's been very consistent and uh, smooth trip so far. And this was our last fast charger of the trip. So let's head down to the track. And we have arrived to the out of spec headquarters studio track all the names you want to give it uh this was a really awesome day i mean i've been on the road all day tom just left in the mini um but let's talk about the trip so the mini is awesome what the biggest takeaway is it's the shortest range new electric vehicle they no longer sell these in the us and it was able to just drive down from basically New York City halfway to Miami, no problem. It could have just kept going all the way down and probably across the country. Uh, there's plenty of fast chargers on the coasts, especially. I haven't looked to see if you can go across the country, probably be tight, but you could do it, I bet. And do you really need all of the range? This is sort of an interesting thing. With enough charging infrastructure, range becomes less of a concern, especially if you don't road trip a lot. If you only go on a road trip maybe once or twice a year, and it's like five, 600 miles like what we did today, why do you need to be carrying around all that extra weight and cost in a battery pack if you don't use it? Charging infrastructure solves the problem. So I predict that as we have more DC fast charging infrastructure, the need for long range vehicles will decrease tremendously. And with that said, the new Mini Electric is a surprise off to the start for its ease of road tripping. 50 kilowatt isn't that much, but it tapers at 80%, 77% it starts to taper. So you really, you're charging deep anyway. I'm blown away with the car. I think it's a really good option and I'm really, really looking forward to the rest of the tests over the next few days here at the track. So make sure you take a look at inside EVs, uh, because I'll be doing some videos for them, some drag races against the i3 and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next road trip.